Hello, my name is Linnea Witzak and I'm a doctoral candidate in Dr. Karen Bales' lab at the University of California, Davis. Thank you for listening. Today, I'll be sharing my research on the effects of male aggressive temperament on physiological and behavioral responses to an acute social stressor in adult coppery TD monkeys. This study was conducted at the California National Primate Research Center and was published in the American Journal of Primatology. Less than 5% of mammals are monogamous. TD monkeys are socially monogamous New World monkeys that live in the Amazon basin in South America. In the wild, TD monkeys display quintessential aspects of social monogamy, including living in pairs or small family units, biparental care, coordination of territorial displays, and pair bonding. Pair bonds are characterized by preference for maintaining proximity to the attachment figure, distress upon involuntary separation from the attachment figure, and the ability of the attachment figure to buffer its partner from stress. For adult TD monkeys, pair mates are each other's primary attachment figures. While social monogamy is highly conserved across TD monkey species, the degree to which partners display pair bond related behaviors differs between pairs. Affiliative behaviors such as grooming and tail twining aid in maintaining monogamous bonds. Evolved agonistic behaviors such as mate guarding are also important for pair bond maintenance. The socially monogamous prairie vole has been the model organism for understanding the neurobiological mechanisms underlying monogamy. Prairie vole studies have demonstrated that both arginine vasopressin and oxytocin are necessary for facilitating and maintaining monogamy in both males and females. Relationship quality and physiology also have bidirectional effects on each other, which can strengthen pair bonds. A dysregulation of normal oxytocin functioning may result in atypical social interactions, such as decreased affiliation, increased partner-directed aggression, and increased anxiety. While many studies have investigated the physiological mechanisms underlying aggression in non-monogamous primate species, and several have studied aggressive behaviors in monogamous primates, very few have examined the interactions between oxytocin and aggression in monogamous primates. Given the importance of oxytocin in the facilitation and maintenance of monogamous bonds, we wanted to understand the interplay between excessive aggression and the neurobiological mechanisms that are pivotal to the formation and maintenance of monogamy in primates. Our main objective was to investigate the effects of male aggressive temperament on behavioral and physiological responses to an acute social stressor. We hypothesized that when confronted with a social stressor, High aggressive males would exhibit lower baseline levels of oxytocin than low aggressive males, and no rise in oxytocin in response to a perceived intruder while in the presence of their partner. With regards to changes in behavior in response to a perceived intruder, we hypothesized that aggression would be negatively correlated with partner-directed affiliative behaviors, positively correlated with acts of aggression, and positively correlated with anxiety-related behaviors. To determine a male's aggression score, we surveyed lab members and asked how they would categorize males on a zero to four scale. A male who's given a score of zero has never shown any aggression towards his partner. A male who scores a one is generally non-aggressive but showed some food aggression early in the pairing. A score of two represents minor fighting unrelated to food that is short lasting and doesn't escalate to chasing or fighting. A male who scores a three shows persistent food aggression throughout the pairing. A male who scores a four shows persistent non-food related aggression that escalates to chasing and sometimes injury. We collapsed males who scored a zero, one, or two into the same category, giving them a low aggression score. Those given a three or four were given a high aggression score because these forms of aggression have led to injury and potentially lead us to deciding to split a pair. Within our sample, we had 10 low aggressive males and 10 high aggressive males. We used a mirror technique developed by our lab to simulate the introduction of a same-sex stranger to the test subject. A mirror was placed in front of the subject's home cage so the male could see his reflection as well as that of his mate. Each session lasted five minutes with either the non-reflective back of the mirror showing, the control condition, or the reflective front of the mirror showing, the experimental condition. During each session, Subjects were filmed, and behaviors were scored using Behavior Tracker 1.5, using an established ethogram. 
In order to measure changes in oxytocin levels, we conducted femoral blood draws immediately after each testing condition. Oxytocin concentrations were measured using an enzyme immunoassay. Here's an example of some of the behaviors we scored during testing. The male is on the top perch and the female is below. The mirror is in front of where the female moves to sit. The male begins to vocalize in tail lash while the female moves to have a better view of the mirror. The male approaches his partner, lip smacking and maintaining contact for a few seconds. He then reaches out to restrain her. This is an excellent example of what mate guarding looks like in this species. The female then leaves to investigate the mirror while the male continues to vocalize an arch. We found that all pairs displayed robust reactions to the perceived intruder. All dependent variables were converted to percent change from the control condition to the experimental condition to compare the amount and directionality of change for each dependent variable for our subjects. We used general linear mixed models to model percent change in oxytocin concentration from the control to the mirror condition as a function of aggression category and whether the male saw the front of the mirror first or second. On this graph, the y-axis represents the percent change in oxytocin concentration from the control to the experimental condition. Low aggressive males percent change in oxytocin is depicted in light gray, and high aggressive males percent change in oxytocin is depicted in dark gray. Low aggressive males exhibited a rise in plasma oxytocin in response to an acute social stressor, while high aggressive males exhibited a drop in oxytocin. Full models for behavioral outcomes included the fixed effects of aggression category, percent change in oxytocin, an oxytocin by aggression interaction effect, and whether males saw the front of the mirror first or second. The y-axis represents the percent change in affiliative behaviors. On the x-axis, we have social contact, lip smacking, and proximity. In this graph, and in all following bar graphs, low aggressive males' percent change in behavior is depicted in light gray, and high aggressive males' percent change in behavior is depicted in dark gray. Low aggressive males showed a greater increase in time spent in contact with their partners and lip smacked more when they saw the front of the mirror compared to high aggressive males. This graph illustrates the interaction between males' percent change in social proximity duration on the y-axis and percent change in oxytocin concentration on the x-axis. The blue circles represent low aggressive males and the red dots represent high aggressive males. There is a non-significant trend towards an interaction effect, indicating that high aggressive subjects trended towards spending less time in close proximity to their partner when their percent change in oxytocin concentration was negative. This graph depicts males' percent change in aggressive behaviors on the y-axis. On the x-axis, we have restraining, and back arching and tail lashing. Temperament alone did not predict differences in males' aggressive responses to an acute social stressor. Interestingly, we did find a trend towards an interaction effect between temperament and percent change in plasma oxytocin concentration. This graph illustrates the interaction between males' percent change in back arching and tail lashing frequency on the y-axis and percent change in oxytocin concentration on the x-axis. Again, the blue circles represent low aggressive males and the red dots represent high aggressive males. These findings indicate that low aggressive males arch and lash more when they exhibit a drop in oxytocin in response to an acute stressor while high aggressive males arch less when they exhibit a drop in oxytocin. This last graph depicts males' percent change in anxious behaviors on the y-axis. On the x-axis, we have males' time spent moving throughout the test and the number of times he broke affiliative contact with their partners. High aggressive males trended towards a lower percent increase in moving in response to an acute social stressor compared to low aggressive males. We had hypothesized that oxytocin concentrations would rise in response to social stress in low aggressive males, whereas high aggressive males would not exhibit the typical anxiolytic rise in oxytocin concentration. We did find that oxytocin concentrations rose for low aggressive males and decreased relative to the control condition for high aggressive males. 
These differences in physiological responses to the mirror may be explained in part by the observed differences in partner interactions during testing. We found that low aggressive males showed a larger increase in time spent in contact with their partners when faced with a perceived intruder in their home cage. This increase in time spent in contact with their pair mates may have been related to the observed rise in oxytocin concentration in low aggressive males in response to the mirror. High aggressive males with a greater decrease in oxytocin concentration relative to the control condition displayed a greater decrease in back arching and tail lashing. A rise in oxytocin may underlie coordinated displays between pair bonded primates. During testing, when one partner started arching and lashing, the other would join in the display. This behavior may therefore reflect greater coordination of territorial displays between partners. To display other agonistic partner-directed behaviors such as pair mate restraint, females must let their partners sit close enough to interact. High aggressive males spent significantly less time in contact with their mates. Therefore, they had fewer chances to display aggressive partner-directed behaviors during testing. For the present paper, we only scored male behaviors. However, we just finished scoring females' behaviors for this test. We wanted to know whether females' behaviors were affected by males' temperament, males' behaviors, or an interaction between males' temperament and response to the mirror. We're in the final stages of revisions for this paper, so be on the lookout for this publication in the next few months. In humans, oxytocin mediates fear and stress in response to social stimuli. During this test, when one partner exhibited anxiety-related behaviors such as pacing, we often observe the pair mate approach and lip smack. Affiliative behaviors may buffer partners from stressors and may be initiated more in times of social stress to reinforce the pair bond. This mirror technique serves as a valuable tool for examining individual differences in response to social stressors in adult TD monkeys. The use of a mirror is safer than introducing a live intruder, and all subjects demonstrated a robust response to the mirror at rates that were comparable to previous live intruder studies. Future studies should incorporate measures of dyadic interactions and early life experience to further understand differences in responses to social stressors in monogamous primates. We did see differences in physiological and behavioral responses to the mirror based on males' temperament. Understanding differences in males' reactions to the same stressor may help us better predict how males will respond to novel or stressful situations and identify ways to mitigate negative responses to stress. Males identified as high aggressive may be good candidates for positive reinforcement training for affiliative behavior. Our lab has done this training with a few pairs, teaching partners to sit in proximity to each other and allow each other to take treats. This training aims to reduce aggressive partner-directed behavior maintain stability within the pair. I wanted to end by thanking my dissertation committee, my lab members, and my funding sources. All TD Monkey photographs in this presentation were taken by either Rocio Arias del Razo, Alexander Baxter, or Kathy West. I would also like to thank the California National Primate Research Center, especially the veterinary staff and research services. I would also like to thank the American Journal of Primatology for publishing our paper and the American Society of Primatology for featuring our study on the Hot Topics in Primate Welfare page. If you'd like to learn more about this study, I encourage you to read the full article in the American Journal of Primatology. Thank you so much for listening.